Hello YouTube, in this video I'm going to demonstrate to you a safe and efficient way to train your forearms without occurring any wrist pain and that is the finger curl. So for people who try to grow their forearms you heard that you can just do deadlifts or pulls and that will take care of it. Of course that's not true, you need wrist flexions in your training. But the big problem is that many people start doing that and they'll quickly realize that it starts hurting their wrist. They have weird clicking noses when they do wrist curls and they don't really know why because they've been told that the exercise is safe and fine to do. And so they keep doing it, they have more and more wrist pain, it turns into tendonitis and it actually starts to affect their pressing strength, which means that they cannot push as much for the upper body hypertrophy aspect and they lose size. I'm going to tell you how to avoid that 100% because I have the same problem. The only type of wrist curl that I've liked and worked for me was sitting down with a fixed dumbbell so the collars cannot rotate with my arm put against my, uh, my leg and doing wrist curls in that fashion. It's the only way it worked. But I actually found replacements now that I'm in the home gym. So, for a long time, I did them, as I said, sitting or I strike with the preacher curl and it never worked, it always hurt. And the first lesson I got from that is, even though your wrist has a large range of motion, it does not mean that you need to go through it to train the forearm effectively, especially here, okay? This is what creates the pain when you do your wrist curl and it goes like this, you have the weight that's pushing uh, diagonally, diagonally uh, against your hand and it's creating too much strain for the wrist. This is why it hurts. You don't have to do full roam. It doesn't mean that it's not important to do it a little bit here and there, but it's not necessary for the development of the forearm. And that's something I'm going to demonstrate to you guys today. So, as replacement for sitting wrist curls, you can try standing wrist curls. And for me, I like to do them behind the back. Because if you do them here, for example, you quickly realize that if you do them like this, it's going to run into your thigh, especially if you have big thigh. And so it's much easier to just grab it behind like this and do them here. And as you can see here, the range of motion is quite reduced, but I can still feel my forearms, okay? If you want, I always found that a thumbless grip also works and you can really overload in that fashion. That would be the partial range of motion you utilize for the forearm, but it's quite efficient if you pair it with today's main lift, the finger curl, because the finger curl will go through a full range of motion using a certain spec that makes it so that it doesn't hurt the wrist. So let's get to it. You have really four ways of doing that with multiple variants, but I'm only going to stick to two with two variations, and the two are pronated and supinated. So the pronated finger curl is just going to, re to, uh, to uh, be uh, like this. So you grab the bar and you're going to let it hang by the finger and you're going to curl it up. Let it hang, curl it up. When you go down, if you want to over exaggerate and go here to fill the squeeze, you can. I don't think it's that necessary. And you can just repeat that. Now, as you can tell here, this is really not comfortable. And you can see that the bar is slightly starting to, uh, to rotate towards the side of the arm I'm not using. Which is why I always recommend if you do pronate it, do it with two hands. It's more natural because the arms just fall straight down and you can just grab it like this. And it's much better here. So of course, this is not the, the best bar to use, but with a straight bar, it is actually quite efficient. And for the pronated version, I recommend the straight bar, regardless of its size. And you will find that it is much harder to load a finger curl because you go through the full range of motion. So for the, the demonstration again, I'm actually going to grab a good bar to show you guys. Because it's going to be much more efficient. So here, with a straight bar that would be grabbing where it feels comfortable. You're here, you go here, okay, and you go up. People ask me how much of the finger is holding the bar. The finger should be like this, 
okay? So the ball just rests here, because of course, if you do it more like this, it's going to fall. And the little trick that I spoke about, about the full range of motion to preserve the wrist, is actually the movement of the wrist as the fingers open, because let's say you do the normal wrist thing here, okay, you're here. The range of motion is quite reduced, and if you want it, you could go much higher. And as you can tell, there's a better squeeze if I go here. Okay, but that can create wrist pain, even though it's just the standing version, which should result in much less pain than the sitting one. If you do it finger curl style, as I go down here, in this position here, and I go up, as you can see, as I close the fingers, the wrist also slightly rotates in. I'm not just doing this, okay? Because if I just do this, it still works the forearm and the fingers for sure, but I feel much less involvement in the forearm, as if when I actually finish with a grip and I finish with the closed hand, it's much more potent. And that reduces pain 100% because the limiting factor in this case ends up being your ability to finish the movement. Opening the end to catch the bar, that's easy. It's trying to revert it back with the fingers that becomes tough. So that's a really good exercise if you want a forearm isolation movement. And now we're going to get into my favorite because if I like the pronated, I have yet to find a better movement than the supinated, supinated version of this very same exercise. So in this case, I like to use the easy bar because I like to do it one-ended with the pronated version for a reason that you're going to understand quickly. So, simple, grab it here, and in the same position, you're going to open the end and close. And as you close, you finish in a curl. Okay, so the wrist is engaged and tilted up. Open here and close. And again, I think it's going to be clearer here, but as you open here, this would be, if I just did it like a normal wrist curl like this, many people would want to go past that point and start going back like this. And that's what creates pain. But if I do it the same way with the finger curl, as I go down, I open, and as you can see, I'm able to maintain the wrist position. The wrist is not cocked back, but the involvement is much higher because now the bar is further away from the center of the palm, so it makes it much harder. And I finish. And I said that I like to do it single-handed for this one because of the rotation of the shoulder. As you can see, it's perfectly stable. The bar is not trying to rotate out. And this one, I can tell you, is going to make a difference. My form is pumped like crazy. I still recommend to do it within a relevant rep range because you don't just want the fluff aspect, you want to load it. I especially like doing from four to six sets of six to 10, eight to 12 reps and superset it, of course, because it's not a taxing movement. When you start isolating the forearm, you start with three sets a week, you build up from there. I really like to do my wrist flexions on the upper day and I do all of the isometric holds on the lower days because I found that programming wise, it makes the most sense. So that's going to be that for the finger curls. It really is not that hard to get, okay? This is a normal wrist curl here or here. This is a finger curl. So you open, you block the ball here, and you bring it up, same for here. If you need more demonstrations, there are many on the internet, but I think that this is going to be a good way for a lot of you guys who suffer from wrist pain to just do away with it. There is no point in suffering through a lift that, that puts you in pain, there is no reason. Your body is showing you that it doesn't work. And I can tell you that this will. So if you need the full arsenal, you do the behind the back with a straight bar where you load a lot of weight and you do a partial range of motion. And with this, you do a full range of motion. And you will find that your wrist will, find, you will feel amazing and your forearms will finally start growing. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.